with your presence tonight, God. Pray as your word go forth, God, that you minister to us, help us to receive what you have for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's clap our hands right now to the Lord. Let's all worship the Lord tonight in song. I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. 
the Lord. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful for that name tonight? Amen. We are overcomers tonight because of the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm grateful for that tonight. Only that name. No other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. I'm glad I know him tonight and I'm glad I know his name. Anybody say amen to that? Amen. 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 Ushers are going to help us tonight. We'll receive this evening's offering. It's good to see everyone in God's house. So grateful to see our faithful saints again. It's good to be back in God's house. An opportunity to praise and worship His name. Especially if we want to welcome our guests. Unless you know that we, th- we are thankful that you're here tonight. Bethlehem Church, can we welcome our guests? Thank you for being here tonight. Amen. Amen. We're glad you're here. We want you to know you're welcome here at Bethlehem Church. Uh, by way of announcement, I'll let you know that tomorrow night is registration for Bethlehem Christian School. That's at 630. So come out and be prepared to uh, register your children. And we'll have a short meeting concerning this upcoming school year. Just, just by, for knowledge sake, uh, just to let you know that we are, we're, we're going to want to take a credit card number to put on uh, uh, to validate your tuition this year. And, and not necessarily that it's going to be run, but just be prepared to give that. And also that that's available for some who may uh, prefer that method. Uh, just so it's taken care of on a timely manner, uh, just to let you know that. But that's tomorrow night at six thirty. Registration and of course the first day of school is this coming Monday. And I know all of our young folks are excited about that school time. I'm excited about it. I'm ready to go back to school, uh, enjoy that, and being with our young folks. So that's this Thursday night is registration at six thirty. First day of school, uh, we'll be there at seven thirty. Uh, and that's this coming Monday. Uh, there's no needs that were necessarily turned in, but first, before I before we pray, I want to say it's good to see Brother Ben Gray uh, back here tonight. Power of prayer, Amen, Amen. And, and I, I think his mom will probably explain this better. But the way I understand, he's supposed to be having some some after effects of this, and it's supposed to be some black and uh, some bruising and some rot that's going on with this particular bite. But the way I understand, Sister Amy said there's nothing but just two bites, and that's it. Just two little holes. And that's very uncommon. So we're thankful. He said, praying people kept him. We're thankful for the power of prayer. Don't you know God's still a healer? He can still move in our lives. Amen. 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 I'm excited what God has done for him. I hate that he had to go through that, but I'm glad God's still touching lives today. If you have a need, you can represent that by the uplifting of your hand tonight and believe God to do a great work. Let's pray right now. Let's believe God to move in this place. God, we are so grateful for the power that you have, the authority you have healing virtue that comes in your name lord we come to you right now coming in that wonderful beautiful name of jesus we come to you asking for you to move on the needs that is in this place so many people need a touch from you god we're thankful that you've blessed and you've healed and you've moved and you've delivered so many times we come to you again lord expecting for you to do it for your name's sake and for your glory have your way in jesus name we pray amen amen we're going to ask this evening that you would march as the ushers lead you bring your offering tonight as unto the lord
Lord. Aren't you thankful that he's on time? I'm glad my Lord shows up when I need it. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Uh, I, the way I understand it, uh, Brother Ethan has been with us for the last couple of months, and I think he's getting ready to go back to school. Is that right? It's going to be his last service with us. So we want to let him know how much we appreciate him. Aren't you thankful for Brother Ethan and the Tucker family? Just a tremendous musician and singer. It's good for him to have been with us this summer. We're, 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 we're going to be praying for him, that God would bless him as he goes back to school. We're going to uh, pray that God would continue to use him. I'm glad to see our young folks involved in the ministry and doing a work for the Lord. Brother Wilson's going to come at this time, and he's going to preach to us. Let's welcome our bishop as he comes right now. Give that hand to the Lord. Go ahead and give him a good praise. I'm done. Amen. Thank the Lord for the good music, good singing, good worship thus far. You know what this means, don't you, when I come down here? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming over here. That's right. What does that mean, an hour and a half? Is that what you said? Two hours. I ain't got much sense, but I got more than that. Praise God. Thank you for cooperating and moving over here close. Uh, Appreciate it so much. We are a privileged people. We are blessed to know who Jesus is. Uh, a lot of people don't really know who he is. Uh, they believed on him, they say, but they still don't know who he is. Some do not have the revelation of God in Christ. And uh, I'll be teaching tonight on one of the core doctrines of the apostolic faith. And that is the revelation of God in Christ. Uh, there has been a deception through the land, through the world, actually, uh, for hundreds of years, deceiving people into believing there's three persons in a Godhead. The Scripture does not teach that, but I will teach you what... Uh, the scripture teaches about the Godhead tonight. Um, Luke 10, 21 said, In that hour Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. Matthew 16 15 through 17 said, He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. For flesh, listen to this, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Now, if the Father had been a person, then he could not have said flesh and blood hath not revealed this to thee. Right? Are you getting this? So, if you don't have a revelation of the oneness of the Godhead, uh, I hope you can get one tonight, and you need to seek God for the revelation of who God is. And 
the light will come on. And I have watched people as I've witnessed to them through the years. I've watched it dawn on them, the, the truth. I have seen it when it hit them. And some of them obeyed it. Some of them rejected it. But uh, we need to walk in the light as we have the light, don't we? Because if we don't, darkness will come. It does make a difference in what you believe about the Godhead. Uh, again, I've said this before, you know, some people say, well, you're going to heaven, it's sort of like going to Chicago. You know, you can go Route 57 or you can go Route 55 or you can go 65 up to Indianapolis and then go that way or whatever. But uh, we're not going to Chicago, we're going to heaven. Now, but one way to get there, and we've got to believe the right thing to get there, don't we? So it does make a difference what you believe about John 8, 23 said, and he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for if you believe not, I am he, ye shall die in your sin. Uh, he's talking about he, he being the Messiah, the one that uh, has come, to, uh, the Savior of the world. But he did not say, except you believe I am three. Right? He said, except you believe I am he, ye shall die in your sins. So there is what we call the oneness of the Godhead. And, of course, the other parts or some of the other parts of the core doctrines of the apostolic church is baptism in the name of Jesus and receiving the Holy Ghost. And these things, knowing the oneness of the Godhead and baptism in Jesus' name and receiving the Holy Ghost separates us from the church world because they don't believe that. We are separate and set aside. We are a distinct body of believers. Uh, and, and, and that doesn't make us, us better, but the doctrine is true, the doctrine is right, and it helps us to be saved, by the way. And so history and the Bible teaches that Jesus is the almighty God. And not, if you will, a third person in a so-called trinity. Jesus is not the third person in a trinity. The denominational world, the, nom the denominal world has been programmed and badly deceived into believing there is three separate, distinct, coexistent, co-eternal persons in the Godhead. Now, they have been programmed to believe that they will tell you there's one God but there's three persons hence God the Father a person God the Son a person and God the Holy Ghost a person so if you got God the Father is a person and God the Son is a person and God the Holy Ghost is a person you got three gods and you got three persons they, 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 they don't they don't want to go with the equation on the first part, but they do want to go as three persons. But there's, if he's God the Father and God the Son and God, then there's three gods. But we know better than that. Let me ask you a question. Is the word Trinity, word Trinity in the Bible? The answer simply is no. A quote from the book, The Holy Trinity, says this. Trinitarian's method of thought is derived from the uh, precedence of Plato and Philo, two pagan philosophers of Carthage. Tertullian, somewhere in the neighborhood of 160 to 250 A.D., coined the term Trinity. The word Trinity is not in the Bible, but Tertullian coined the term Trinity. He is perhaps most famous for being the oldest extant Latin writer to use the term Trinity, or Latin would be Trinitus, and giving the oldest formal exposition of a Trinitarian theology. Now, what am I saying? I'm saying Tertullian wasn't the Bible. Tertullian came after the message, the apostolic message of the oneness of the Godhead, 160, 160 after, after Christ. 
He was declared a heretic by church leaders. The doctrine of the Trinity came into clear focus for the first time during his era, if you will, or, or long in that time. In 325 A.D., approximately 300 years, that is, after Jesus' death, uh, the story goes on that the doctrine of the Trinity became Catholic law. In the book Catholicism, the author, which is a priest, says that the doctrine of Trinitarian baptism, as dictated by the Nicene Council, 325 A.D., was the first time the church varied from the Scripture and used the assumption of a Trinity. You follow me? So I'm simply saying... I'm simply saying, Brother Brian, if you don't mind getting me Brother, Brother V's Bible or my Bible. For the first time after Pentecost, after, after the writings, if you will, of the Scriptures, somebody came along and instituted a term called Trinitarianism. Or the, and I'm going to say it again, the so-called Trinity, Okay. I don't mean to be harsh when I'm speaking. I really don't. I just want to be emphatic to tell you what the truth is, okay? Uh, because a lot of people have simply been deceived. I found 56 times the word persons, is persons, plural, is mentioned in the Bible. But not one of these is in reference to God. The word persons mentioned 56 times, but never in reference to God. The singular word, however, person, is mentioned in Hebrews 1, 3. And it is mentioned as Jesus as being God's person. Let's read it. Who being the brightness, talking about Jesus, of his glory and the are you reading it? The express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Even at that, it comes from the Greek word meaning substance or person meaning substance. Jesus is the express image or character of God's substance. Aren't you glad you know he is God's image. Okay. There are three arguments that the church world, if you will, try to use. Let me uh, simply go through through them. Uh, Genesis 1, 26 and 7 reads like this. And God said, let us make man in our image. Now, it appears that there must be more than one. From, I said it appears. No, but it, we're not through. And we hadn't read the next verse, right? Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Let us. The term us comes from the Hebrew word Elohim. However, it does not indicate a plurality of persons. It's not there. The term Elohim was used to denote words designating dominion, lordship, simply saying supreme. If it was a plurality of persons, then according to Aaron and the children of Israel in Exodus 2, 4 through 6, and he received them at their hand and fastened it with a graving tool after he had made a molten calf, and they said, These be thy gods, or Elohim, or, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, Singular, he didn't see God, he saw singular. The, the term Elohim was, was translated us. He saw one, he built an altar before and Aaron made proclamation and said tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Now watch. So, let us make man in our image. It was not more than one person, not according to Jesus, because Matthew 19, 4 said, He answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them, how about Adam and Eve, male and female? Who? He. One person. 
one, one, one entity, if you will. Not according to Isaiah. It was not three according to Isaiah. Isaiah 44, 24 said, Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretches forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. So now let's go ahead. By who? By himself. By my, everybody say he did it by himself. Okay, now watch this. We hadn't read verse 27. We read 126, haven't we? Let's read that again. Verse 26. Can we do that, Kim? So, and God said, let us make man in our image. Now, let's go to 27 now. What did it say? So God created man in what? Their own image. In his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created, created he them. There's a lot of explanations that can be used for the us part. Somebody said that it had to do with, uh, with, with, with the church. God created us. Man fell in the Garden of, image, uh, Garden of Eden. So now he's having the church to make man in his own image. We don't create anything, but we take what's created and make it back in his image. Isn't that wonderful? We got a job to do, don't we? As mean as folks are, we sure got a job to do. Right? Not according to Paul. It wasn't more than one person. It wasn't more than one God. Not according to Paul. Acts 17, 24 20 through 28. God made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before pointing and the bounds of their habitation. That they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after them, and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have. And he's talking about God here, if you will. In him we live and move and have our being also, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. offspring. Eight times Paul mentioned the God, the God that made as singular. When he was saying the God that made the heaven and earth, he, he, he quoted him as being singular. All right, let's move on. That has to do with, uh, with that aspect. Let's go. You know, there's, there, the, one of the arguments in, in the world is we, they found Jesus sitting at the right hand or on his right hand. Right hand, however, denotes power and favor. Brother Jackie, I, I, I made some notes probably. Ooh, how long ago has it been since you was out of the Christian school movement? 20 years? Right after the flood. About, yeah, about 30 years ago. <laughs> long time. Uh, Brother Jackie and I worked hand in hand. I mean, side by side, along with Sister Louise and others. But, but uh, I could call... I called Jack. I called uh, Jackie my right hand man one time. He said that's because I was left handed. <laughs> but, but uh, if I told Brother Jackie or if I told Brother Brian to come up here on my right hand, what would he do? He'd, he'd be at my right hand. He'd be the power. My, if I said I want you to be my right hand, then he would be the power. To demonstrate or to accomplish what I needed to get accomplished. Now, let's go. Acts 5, 31. Let's give you some Bible. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior or to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. Jesus is the right hand of God. Now you say, it looks like there's got to be two because he's at the right. Well, just, just hang on. Just hang on. Okay. Him hath God exalted with his right hand. Now, Acts 7, 56, and said, Behold, I see the heavens open, the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. 
Simply that denotes position of authority, not a literal standing on a right hand. Uh, the, the, the phrase on the right hand was taken from the manner of speaking, from a manner of speaking that was the term they used, meaning that he was exalted to honor, uh, exalted to honor and power, and the highest honor to be seated. It was the highest honor to be seated at the right hand of a prince. That was the that was the terminology. So, uh, uh, Jesus, of course, has the highest honor of the universe. Jesus said, "All power." is given unto me in heaven and earth. So he is, as Brother, as Brother Tucker preached, he is the scepter. He is the right hand. Now, uh, uh, that was Matthew 28, 18. I just skipped that. I, I didn't tell you to read it. But Revelations 4, 2. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven. And what? Set on the throne. Revelation 4, 9, And when those beasts give, give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth, who liveth forever and ever. Now, what did Jesus say? He said, I am alive forevermore. So it was Jesus sitting on the throne. Not a third person. Not a second person. Now, here we go. You say, well, it looks like you got two because you got God and you got Jesus. You got the Father and you got Jesus. Get this in your get this in your system. Get this in your thinking. God was not a man, the Bible said that he should lie. Right? God was not a person outside the person of Jesus Christ. Now, God is a John 4 24. God is a Spirit and they that worship them, him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, father, the term father simply means spirit. The term God simply means spirit. The spirit can say to the flesh anything it wants to without being another person. I talk to myself sometimes, not openly, but but my spirit talks to this flesh sometimes. It says, this is not right. You can't think that way. You can't act that way. You can't say what you want to say. Right? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay. Now, I'm not but one person, though. Thank God. That's what y'all say. And that's what Sister Pat said. The Father is the self-same Spirit as God. By one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. Watch this. Matthew 1, 20 through 23. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. This is Joseph, of course. Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Well, I thought... I thought the Father was Jesus' Father, according to the, the thinking out there, right? But here it says, Jesus, that, that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Wasn't a gray-haired daddy somewhere. Wasn't another young man somewhere. But it, Father, when you look at the term Father in the Bible, when it, retain, when it refers to God, it's a spirit. It's the spirit of God. Father, son, husband, I am, but I got one name and I'm one person. Jesus could handle, could be all of the, all of the, uh, fulfill all the offices of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And he did. Now, uh, when you think of the when you think of Father, you should think of Spirit. Jesus used the term Father to validate that his origination was not from Joseph. It was not. Uh, it, it was not from a flesh, fleshly being. 
If God was the Father, did uh, if God was the Father and the Spirit was the Father, did He have two fathers? No, because God and the Holy Ghost are self-same. The Father and the Holy Ghost are the self-same. Are you getting me? We okay? All right. And uh, verse twenty-one of Matthew, uh, Matthew one, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name. Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So that must mean that Jesus is the Savior, right? You get that? Now, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which is spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. What? Which being interpreted is? So the Spirit has made himself flesh. Not a third person. Why would they use the term third person? Revelation 1, 17, Jesus said, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. So there's not, there's not the one. Now let's go to another subject. Jesus' baptismal scene. Uh, you know, I, 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 I don't think I'm preaching this or teaching this to you because I don't think you believe it. I think you all believe it for the most part. But sometimes if we're witnessing to people, and we ought to be, then you may come across people that gives you some questions that you need to have answers for. Right? Okay. So the baptismal scene, they're saying there was three persons there. Luke 3, 21. Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was open. And the Holy Ghost, verse 22, descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. You have the dove, you got Jesus, and you got a voice. So they say you got three persons. I don't see but one person here. Right? And that's Jesus. It was like a dove representing the spirit because it didn't have a body. The voice didn't represent another person. As God, he could talk anywhere, anytime. Balaam's donkey spoke. The Lord opened the mouth of the donkey, uh, Numbers 22, 28, mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee that thou hast smitten me three times? Even the donkey was called a she, but the donkey wasn't a person. Right? So a voice doesn't have to be a person. God could talk whenever he wanted to. Again, if, if God spoke this, he was what? Spirit. God is a spirit. Again, the word Trinity is never, ever mentioned in the Bible. There are three attributes, but one person. Watch. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Right? John 1, 14 said, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among Who dwelt among us? Jesus, which was the Word, which was God, right? And we beheld His glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father or the Spirit, full of grace and truth. So He was Father in creation, Son in redemption, Holy Ghost is comforter. Three offices, Father, Son, and Husband, but not but one God, one Jesus, one person. John 14, 18 said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. The comforter is the Holy Ghost. And Jesus said, I will come to you. Well, we get the Holy Ghost, don't we? We get the comforter, don't we? You know what Jesus said? I am the comforter. 
And I, or he said, I will come to you. So when we get the Holy Ghost, we get the Spirit, we get Jesus. It's Christ in you. The, wow, isn't that good? It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's what Colossians 1, 27. Then got ahead of myself. You see that? Is it up there? You already got that? See there? Now. John three sixteen for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now watch this. Put this with first John three sixteen. Now a lot of the church world don't like to use this one because it explains what John three sixteen said. What does first John three sixteen say? Hereby perceive we the love of is it up there? Go, go ahead and tell me what it says. Because what? He laid down his life for us, and we all lay down our lives for the brethren. Watch now. John 3, 16 said, For God so loved that he gave his only begotten Son. Here we are. The Spirit is giving the flesh. Right? All right. And so here we are in 1 John 3, 16, said, Hereby perceive we the love of God. I thought Jesus had the love, right? But he gave, hereby perceive we the love of God because, here we go, because he, God, laid down his life. Who laid down his life? Jesus laid down his life. So what does that mean? That means that Jesus is God, right? All the self-same person, being, if you will. Acts 20, 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. God's blood was Jesus Christ. Isn't that great to know, isn't it? Isn't, isn't it wonderful that you don't have to guess who Jesus is? John 6, 62. What if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? What? What? And if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was, had Jesus ever been in heaven? Not in the body, but the Spirit has and is in heaven. Right? Now, for Isaiah 40 and 3. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness... Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our... Now, Isaiah is saying this way back in the Old Testament, right? Hundreds of years before the body of God came into being, right? Now, make straight... In the desert, a highway for our God. Mark 1, 1 through 3 says the beginning of the gospel of who? Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prove, prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Who was Isaiah talking about? A highway for our God. He was talking about Jesus because he is God. <laughs> Lord, somebody else say, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Isn't it great to know who Jesus is? Matthew 1, 21. And she shall bring forth a son, thou shalt call his name Jesus. Here we go again. For he shall save his people from their sins. Jude 25 said this, to the only wise God, our Savior. Be glory and magic, being in power both now and forever. Amen. Jesus came to save us. God is our Savior. Isaiah tells us, or one of the writers, there's, there's, there's no God beside me. Jesus is that God. Now, Isaiah 9, 6 again. Maybe I haven't read this before. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Who's it talking about? And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, what? The Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. 
Jesus is the mighty God. He's the everlasting Father. It's all in Him. It's all in Him. Isaiah 44, 24. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things that stretches forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by himself. Who's saying this? Isaiah is writing it about the Lord, about God, if you will. Now, John 1, 3 says, talking about Jesus, all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. I thought Isaiah said, the Lord formed thee out of the womb. I am the Lord that made. He did, because Jesus is God. Jesus is God. John 14, 8 and 11. Got a lot of verses here tonight, don't I? Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou, show us the Father? You ought to know by now, Philip, who I am. I'm the Father. I'm the Creator. Believest thou not, verse 10, that I am in the Father and the Father in me? In other words, but, uh, believest thou not that I am in the Spirit and the Spirit in me? You follow me again? Okay. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father or the Spirit that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works. So, oh, I like this next one. Anybody know what this next verse is? Have you put it up there yet? Anybody won't guess what this next verse is? There you go. You got it. Can you guess what it is now? Far in... It's talking about Jesus. Read the verse or two before it, and you find out it was talking about Jesus. For in him, not them, but for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Not bodies, but one body. If Jesus is the first and the last, why did God in Isaiah 44, 6 say, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts? Go, go there, Ken. Isaiah 44, 6. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. What did, what did God say here? What did the Lord, the King of Israel, say? I am. You got it? Are you reading it with me? I am the... First and the last, and beside me there, I told you that a while ago, didn't I? Beside me there is no God. Right? Now, hang on, we might want to toggle back and forth between these. The Lord, thus saith the Lord here, I am first and I am the last. Beside me there is no God. Watch Revelation 1 and 8, Jesus speaking. What did Jesus say? I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Jesus is God incarnate. That's why, that's why Jesus could say, I'm the beginning and the end. I am the first and the last. How many Almighties are there? Jesus said, I am the Almighty. Number one Almighty. Am I going too fast? I'm about to get you out of here. That's what I'm doing. Shoot out or slow down a little bit. Life. Bologna and cheese sandwich coming up pretty quick. Watch this. Second Corinthians 5, 17. There if any man be in, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ or reconciled. The, uh, let's read it this way. And all things are of the Spirit who hath reconciled us to the Spirit by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that, what? God or the Spirit was in Christ, reconciling the world himself, not imputing their trespassing of them, and hath committed unto us the world, word of reconciliation. Second Corinthians 4, 4. And whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, 
let the less the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. What is this? What does it say? Read it to me. Who is the image of God should shine unto them. Jesus is the image of the Spirit. God is a Spirit. Jesus was the image of the Spirit. Not another person, not a third or second person. He is the one true God. Acts 9, 5. Paul had studied the Lord of the Old Testament. God, Paul had gotten into the Scriptures, if you will. Paul had known what the Old Testament was all about and who the Lord was. Paul now had been persecuting those of, the Bible used this term, those of this way, this apostolic movement, this Jesus name way. These people that were baptized in Jesus' name and getting the Holy Ghost. Paul, Saul, was persecuting those folks. So he was on the road to Damascus. The light shone out of heaven. And Paul got to wondering what in the world. And he said, and he said, Acts 9, 5, and he said, Who art thou, Lord? Wow, what happened now? And the Lord said, I am. Jesus had already ascended and gone away. Here's this voice out here. Now, right? So Saul is asking, who are you, Lord? He knew the Lord of the Old Testament. And Jesus said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It's hard for thee to kick against me. Oh, hallelujah. Acts seven fifty nine, And they stoned Stephen. What was he doing? Calling upon God and saying, Oh, yes. He knew who Jesus was. He's calling upon God, but saying, Lord Jesus. John 20, 29, Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have not believed. You know what? I don't have the next verse to it or where it, I don't even know. But, 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 but you know what Thomas said? Is it the next verse, Kim? He said, my, uh, Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Is it up there? Can you find, have you found that? Anyway, it's in the Bible. How many knows it's in the Bible? I can find it for you here shortly. If you don't believe me, believe me for the works I did, Jesus said. Okay. Uh, did the Bible say Jesus was God with us? Yes, he did. I quoted it to you, gave it to you a while ago, 123. Behold, a burden shall be the child and shall bring forth a son. I shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. That's who Jesus is. Let me tell you something. When you get Jesus, you get everything. We don't deny the Spirit, and we don't deny the Father, which is the Spirit. Because when you get Jesus, in Him dwelleth all, at Rome, uh, Colossians 2, 9, in Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead body. Aren't you glad you can have Jesus in us? And how do you have Jesus in us? You don't have the person of Jesus in us, but you have the comforter that Jesus tells us he is. I will come to you. So you have Jesus in you by the way of the Spirit. Thank God. Thank God. Somebody say amen to the Word. Somebody said, thank you for letting me out early. Stand with me. No questions, but somebody got a comment about, you want to add another verse to this? There's plenty of verses that talk about the ones of God, Brother Ronnie. Yeah. 